Every so often, you get the opportunity to purchase a knife that changes the way you think about custom knives. This happened to me back at the end of April. I had the chance to buy this knife made by Charles Marlowe. Um, I saw it post for sale on the Cove over on the USN, but at the time I didn't have the cash, so I let it pass. And uh, it was actually my uh, a buddy of mine that bought it. And I just mentioned to him that if he ever thought about selling it, that I would be interested in it. And lo and behold, uh, not very long after that, I got a message from him and uh, he had some orders coming up, so he was gonna let it go. Um, I was able to snag it, sold some stuff, bought it, now it's mine. Uh, I've owned some cool knives over the last few years. Birch's, uh, Rexford's, all that stuff. GTC's, McGinnis's, and they're all very, very cool. But this one takes the cake, in my opinion. So, Charles Marlowe is a knife maker based out of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, he's been making knives for 23 years, 15 of which have been full-time. Um, he tries to design his knives with a timeless aesthetic, something that will look great today and still look awesome tomorrow. Um, due to this, he tends to buck trends when it comes to materials and uh, fads. Um, he's influenced largely by a bunch of the old masters, Terzula, uh, Morseth, Randall, Loveless, Carson, etc. He's also largely self-taught. Um, he said that over the years he has gotten a few tips from Bob T and, and some of those guys. However, um, he's never worked in another maker's shop. And I think in a way that and that lends itself to Charles uh, being a little more, you can see myself in the pivot there, being a little more um, unique in a world of a lot of sameness uh, that it sort of percolates through the knife world these days. So anyway, let's talk about the knife a little bit. The blade is three and a quarter inches long. Um, the overall length is seven and a quarter inches. The weight is 4.7 ounces. And the blade steel on this particular knife is CPM 154. There is a sibling to this knife, a lefty with stag out there that has a 6K blade. But this is the 154 version. Um, personally, I have found that my knife carry preferences seem to fluctuate uh, between three and a quarter and three and a half inch blades. I can do larger, sometimes I happily do, and I can do smaller, sometimes I happily do. But these are the knives that I tend to like the most, the three and a quarter to three and a half inch knives. The Bulldog, this is the Bulldog, is the sickest three and a quarter inch blade that I've had in a long time. Um, dare I say, since I got my Crine Alpha, perhaps but you can see it's got this really traditional upswept design here. Almost kind of a buoy blade, not quite. Um, the spine on it is mirror polished, as are some of the hidden details inside the frame. The hand rubbed finish on the blade itself is just perfect. Uh, which I would expect no less from Mr. Marlowe, but it is really exceptional. Other cool little details of this knife are the beveled thumb stud here, which is angled in the direction that you push. It functions perfectly. The locking screw on the pivot, I did not know what this was when I first got the knife, and so I asked Charles, and he said that it is simply a locking screw. It just keeps the pivot from rotating and loosening itself as you open and close the knife. It's a very old technique of locking one screw with another, is what he said. Um, another really cool thing is he has polished all of the hardware. It's all, albeit covered in fingerprints, mirror polished. Uh, 
Um, let's talk about the handles a little bit. So here's the thing that I always hear about stag, or well, actually, this is the thing I always hear when I hand people this knife for the first time. I don't normally like stag, or I'm not normally a stag guy. However, that's cool, or I like that stag, or something along those lines. Seriously, every time I hand someone this knife, that's what I hear. Um, the stag on this piece is really pretty unbelievable. I can't blame them, really. Um, it's nicely dovetailed, as you can see there with the bolsters. And the, a, a gripe I have with a lot of bones sometimes when it's used on knives is that it's either unevenly thick or it's way too thick. And these are great. They fit in the hand really well, but the thickness is not overbearing on them. They, uh, it's, it's, it's nicely contoured, but still leaving all of the detail from the stag itself. It's just really, really well done. Um, and I think that it complements the overall aesthetic of the knife really well. Just a good, you know, man's mountainy, I don't know, rugged, however else you want to say it, knife. Overall, really great. Um, one other area of this knife that is worth pointing out is the pocket clip. It's a very simple folded spoon pocket clip, you know, nothing too crazy, but it's mounted on two pieces of white micarta that are milled into recesses in the stag slab. And what this does is it allows the clip to mount flush like that, and it also prevents pocket wear as you slide it in and out of your pocket, um, both of your clothing and of the stag, instead of it running over these grooves all the time. This is ridiculous to me. This was one of the coolest things when I saw it, is the way that he executed this clip. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a better way that you could have done it. It's really great. So, um, I mean, the execution of it is absolutely genius. So, um, let's see. To sum it all up, it's a great knife. It's a beautiful knife. It's an extremely well-made knife. Marlow is a tough maker to get stuff from. Um, his books, from what I can tell, are eternally closed. The secondary market on them is very, very steep. These are very expensive knives to buy from a dealer or from another collector, I'm just being honest. Um, there are a few out there on a few dealer sites that are available. I think that uh, Recon One has a couple. I think um, Eboss Haas might have a few. Um, I think there might even be one on Steel Addiction right now. They're expensive. Um, if you are looking for a, one in the similar design, uh, Boker Plus just released this model, the Bulldog, um, that from what I've heard has been very well received. Uh, there will be a link in the description to Blade HQ's page about the Bulldog if you want to pick one up. Um, or anything else from Blade HQ through that link will help benefit me and help me bring more videos like this to you. But uh, that's it, guys. Uh, you know, I mean, what can I say? If you have the opportunity to own or acquire something by Charles, I, I, I can't advise you enough or fast enough to jump on it. They're expensive, but they're worth every penny. The amount of craftsmanship that this gentleman puts into his work is evident in every aspect of this knife. From the jimping, to the thumb stud, to the fit and finish of the scales, to the shape and execution of the blade. It is all perfect. Um, and it's difficult to say that about a knife. There were problems with every knife that I've owned. Um, but this one, I, I really fail to see an issue with it or and I can't think of anything that I would change. So I hope you guys like it. Looking forward to the comments. Like I said, hit the Blade HQ link in the description. Help uh, support this channel and support me. And um, have a great weekend, guys. See ya.